Hi guys, this is Drew Brashler with Northridge Community Church. I've had a couple of you guys ask how I have my video feeds um, set up on uh, on the matrix uh, of the Behringer X32. So today I just wanted to go ahead and show you guys how I have my board set up all the way from um, patching the channels into the subgroups and the DCA uh, um, with their uh, channels that are assigned to it and also uh, the matrix feed. Um, so. Here's the Behringer X32. Uh, we have two services here at Northridge. We have a uh, traditional service, which is um, a choir and orchestra. Uh, and then we have our second services, which is our um, contemporary service, which is more of a kind of a rock feel. Um, so the first service, we uh, use a, a lot of the same inputs that we do for the second service. Um, but second service, I don't use as many of those inputs. Uh, but for first service, we have our choir, our orchestra, and those have a lot of different mics, either close mic or far mics. Um, and then we have our drums, uh, which stay the same uh, through both services. There's a couple of differences in EQ for the for the kick drum uh, for, for for service versus second. Uh, and then we have our wireless mics and whatnot. Um, but. The destinations of the audio from this board go uh, to three different places. We have one, our PA system here uh, for the room. Uh, and then two, we have our audio recording, which is uh, via a uh, Tascam um, audio recording uh, that just records it straight to a CD. And then we have our video system, uh, which is what we are, what I'm recording this on right now. Um, the, the, Feed for the audio for the audio recording and the video recording come off of the same matrix, and that is matrix three and four. Uh, and this is a joined uh, pair that I have set up as left and right. Um, so that sends the audio off to the audio, the video recording, and also the live feed uh, that we send to our different room, just in case we have issues with the uh, first service recording, which we um, display during the second service in another part of our uh, of our church here. So let me go ahead and show you guys how I have my board set up, um, and then we'll get kind of down to nitty gritty. So the first six channels over here, uh, we have uh, my handheld mics. Um, when, I'm, when I'm mixing, um, you'll notice when you start getting your hands on the board, uh, your right hand sits really nicely right here, and your left hand sits really nicely right here. And so the most important things to me um, are getting the vocals uh, to mix well. So um, I always put the uh, the vocal channels right where my left hand is sitting, and I, I find that uh, over here on the left-hand side of the board is a perfect spot for that. So I have my, my six wireless mics. Uh, I have two of my choir um, mics here. Uh, sometimes during second service, we have a, a, a choir that... Uh, sings along, and so I, I only use two of the of the choir mics for that. Uh, our first service, I, I have all four choir mics sitting right here. Uh, and then we have our electric guitars and our acoustic guitars uh, here in the green. Uh, and then we have our different keyboards uh, and pianos. So we have uh, grand piano, keys, uh, and then we have bass guitar right here. Uh, we only have one, so that's good. And then we have our pastor channel. Um, and then we switch over to 17 through 32. Uh, this is the layer that I don't adjust as much. Um, so I'm not adjusting the drums as much as I am uh, adjusting the vocals, or I'm not adjusting any of the orchestra channels as much as I am you know, the electric guitar and the acoustic guitar. So all the secondary stuff that I'm not going to be messing with a lot, um, I put on the second layer. So I have my drums right here. We have two kick drum mics. We have a Beta 52 and a Beta 91. Uh, Beta 91 is on the inside. That mostly gets the click um, of the beater hitting the head. Uh, and then the Beta 52 really gets the punch of the drum. Um, we have our snare, which is a Beta 57. Uh, we have our high and low toms. Um, and those are Audix Micro Ds. Uh, and then we have our overhead mic, which is uh, Audio-Technica AT2051. Uh, Real nice mic. Um, our orchestra channels I leave here. We have an orchestra snake on stage, uh, and that has four channels on it. Um, sometimes we have a like a flute or recorder or uh, a violin. Sometimes it comes in and plays. Um, so I just kind of leave this here uh, just in case I need to add something. Uh, I have two audience mics that we, uh, two shotgun mics that go on either side of the stage. Uh, this is for the in-ear monitor system. So uh, this is a linked channel. Um, both of them are the same mics. Uh, they're an Audio-Technica uh, I can't remember the model name. Uh, and then these are the other channels that I, uh, I don't use. These are my last two choir uh, mic channels. And then we also have a, uh, a Leslie um, uh, 
cabinet that we have, um, and so I don't obviously don't use those for second service. Um, on our aux in and USB returns, uh, this is where I have all of my uh, AV equipment. So my CD player, my computer, um, I have a, a MP3 player that I play um, on these. Uh, so my CD player, I um, built a box uh, to convert the stereo into mono. Since we're a mono room, it's silly to send uh, a left and right into the board um, just to switch it down to mono. Um, so I go ahead and sum that right after, uh, you know, right at the plug. Uh, it goes, um, sums to mono and then through an isolation transformer and then gets sent uh, down an XLR, um, down a, a balanced cable uh, into the uh, X32. Sorry. Yeah. And then we have, so that's the CD player and then we have our computer. Over here are uh, the effects returns, uh, this is kind of standard for the board. Um, we have our um, effects one, two, three, and four. Uh, these are all linked, um, and they are spread stereo. Um, but I'll, I'll explain that in a little bit. Uh, and then we have our bus masters. So these uh, are the different things uh, that we have set up for uh, subgroups and inner monitors and then the effects uh, sends. So I have mine set up as a six uh, pre-fade, a six post-fade, and four... Um, sorry, <laughs> wow, I did that wrong. Six pre-fade, six audio groups, and four post-fade uh, groups. So my pre-fade is for my in-ear monitor systems. Uh, so we have six different in-ear monitors. Uh, so uh, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Uh, this is um, a, a weird little headphone amp thing that we have going into the microphone input because it doesn't have a uh, line level in. So that's why the level on this one is turned way down. Uh, and then we have our uh, subgroups. So I have six different subgroups here. I have my vocal, drum, guitar, keys, orchestra, and bass. And so each of these is where I actually sum my audio uh, to before I send it to the stereo uh, bus. And the reason being is because now I can go in here and I can put uh, any EQ that I need to uh, as a global adjustment. Um, I can also put compressors. Uh, if you guys have heard of Dave Ratt, this is kind of a cool uh, deal that he has. Um, and go watch his videos, he's a real smart guy. Um, but I've kind of uh, accustomed some of that type of stuff into the setup of this board. So my, four, my six vocal mics go into the vocal mix bus, and there is a global compressor that does compress a little bit. Um, I have my drum mix, same sort of deal, global uh, EQ, uh, if I need to adjust anything, like if there's a problem frequency, I do that. Uh, but also compression. Uh, guitar channel, I don't have much compression on that one just because I, I feel it, it changes the tune, the sound of it. Uh, keys, I have compression on. Orchestra, definitely, um, just because with like the flute that plays, um, it's a very dynamic uh, thing, and I don't want that to kill everyone's ears. Uh, and bass also has kind of a, just a, a real mild compression on that. But the nice thing about having the, the compressors on here is if they start um, playing a lot louder, you know, it kind of keeps them in track and keeps them kind of in their, in the realm of your mix. So it kind of sorts into an auto mix. Uh, there's also a way that we can um, put things on two DCAs um, and uh, boost before the subgroups and then um, lower the after the subgroups um, just to kind of make a mix more compressed or more dynamic. Um, and look at Dave Ratt's videos for that stuff. He, he really explains that well. Uh, and then we have our effects sends. So uh, I have four different effects here. I have my vocal reverb. Uh, my instrument reverb, my tap delay, which I, I use for my uh, lead vocals, and an additional effects just in case I need it. Uh, so that's how I have this stuff set up. So like I was saying, all of my channels do not go hit the stereo bus by themselves. They go through one of these subgroups first. So um, basically, I do that by um, you know selecting a channel. So we're going to go select handheld one, uh, which is a vocal channel. Um, and we go in and press bus one through eight, uh, sends on fader, and we unmute it in the vocal um, bus. And then we have it muted on the drum bus, and then the guitar, keys, orchestra, all of those, it's muted. And so that channel is not going into these. Now, I don't have to raise these faders because it's a, it's a bus, so it's, it's an actual group where it's 
sending all of the audio to that. And then um, I need to make sure that I unselect it from my stereo up here. Because if I do have it sent to my stereo bus, it's just going to bypass the group altogether and pretty much just go into the stereo bus unless you have the, um, unless you have the subgroup louder uh, than you have it going into the stereo bus. But it's just kind of silly. So uh, don't do it that way. You'll find a lot of problems if you, if you do set it up that way. So then all of my uh, speech channels um, actually go to my mono uh, fader. So if we go select uh, my pastor mic, which I'm talking on right now, you'll see that it's going to my mono bus. This is the only thing, uh, this and one of my handhelds is the only things that don't actually go into a group. Um, also my uh, computer and my CD, those don't go into a group either. Those just go straight to the stereo bus. Um, now, the reason I'm going to the mono is because in the matrix sense, and I'll show that to you here in one second, I can actually boost my mono up a whole lot louder than my music. Now, if you notice uh, in your recordings uh, that if you have your speech and your music going into the same bus, going into a CD player that's you know recording the entire um, service, you'll notice that your uh, speech is going to be a lot quieter than your music. Um, and so to counteract that, basically we're sending my pastor mic into the mono bus. Um, and so we can see that over here. So my mono fader is right here and my left and right fader is there. Um, but then we can go, this is the thing. Let's go over to sends. All right. So let me show you guys this. Yeah, let me just pull up my other camera here. All right, so you'll notice that in three and four, uh, which are my matrix, that uh, the mono is boosted up all the way to the top. But then if we select the left and right, that it's not, it's a lot lower. And so to do, what I'm doing here is I am making the music that's being recorded at a lower volume than my speech. And so what happens is when, uh, you know, after the set uh, of, uh, of the worship, um, you know, the band comes off stage and then, you know, the pastor starts talking, in the CD recording and the video recording, all of that is at equal volumes. If you have these at, this, at the same level, then your, um, your speech would be a lot lower. Now, but then in the main PA, both of these are, are pretty much the same. I think I have my, um, my mono a little bit louder in the main PA. So I send um, off of Matrix 1. Um, matrix 1 goes to my PA here at the church, and then Matrix 3 and 4 is my video sends. And like I was saying, these are linked, uh, linked channels, um, and they are, um, they are essentially a, uh, a stereo spread. Um, so then uh, my matrix one is my main PA. This is mono, um, since we're a mono system here. Um, so to get the channels um, from the stereo going into the matrix, uh, all you have to do is pr select um, either the stereo bus or the, main, or the mono. Um, and so we're going to select the stereo, the stereo bus here. And then uh, we have right here, we have our sends, and we can press sends on fader too if we wanted to do that. Nope, we can't, never mind. Um, but right here, uh, our sends page on the LCD, and let me zoom in on this. We just go and turn it up or down. Um, and that is uh, varying the level of, um, of what's being sent from the left right into the matrix three and four. So that is a really quick version of how I have my board set up. Oh, geez, I didn't even talk about the DCAs. Um, the DCAs, uh, I, I just posted a video explaining the differences between a DCA and a group. A DCA is a remote control to uh, faders that are assigned to that. So uh, like on my drums, if I was to turn uh, the DCA on my drums up, that's like me taking all of my fingers um, and uh, raising up all of these faders evenly. Um, so over here on my DCAs, uh, I have uh, eight DCAs here. I have my vocal and choir, so both of those are controlled um, on uh, DCA1. Uh, DCA2 is my drums, um, so you can see that right there. Okay, uh, DCA3 is my guitars, and four is my keys. Uh, five is the orchestra uh, mics, uh, six is my bass, and then seven and eight, um, this kind of goes back to what Dave Ratt does. Um, 
by assigning two DCAs uh, to um, all of the channels and one to the bus master. So uh, DCA 7, I have set to all of my channels. Um, Oh, why? There we go. Uh, DCA 7 is set to all of my channels. So this is a way that I can raise all of my channels evenly up in the mix um, before the compressors. And so if I was to lower this volume, it would be putting less volume into those compressors that are on, uh, on all six of these groups. But if I was to raise this, it would be putting that into more gain reduction, more compression. And so if I wanted to take my mix, Oh, sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, and then I select uh, my DCA8 is set to my the outputs of the buses. So this is the bus master. So 7 is on all of the channels. 8 is on the bus masters right here. So these six bus masters. So if I was to lower this, it would be lowering the volume of all six of these uh, bus masters. If I was to raise this, it would be raising the level of all of these bus masters in the mix. So if I was wanting to take my mix and make it more compressed, so less dynamic, I would raise the volume into the compressors and lower the volume after the bus, after the compressors. So this is like my gain uh, reduction uh, or boost on your compressors that you have, you know, in rack mount. So you can think of this kind of as uh, your threshold of where you're compressing, and DCA8 you can think of as your uh, gain makeup. So if I was wanting to put things into more compression, less dynamic, I would raise the volume before the compressors and lower uh, evenly uh, after the compressors. And so this makes my mix more dynamic. It's a lot more squished together. If I was wanting to make things more dynamic, so less, uh, less compressed, so the volume, you know, the swells go up and down a lot more, I would lower the volume before the compressors and raise the volume after the compressors. And you want to do these in even steps because if you don't, you'll notice uh, volume uh, increases or decreases uh, more so than just uh, making things swish together. So that was a really quick um, just explanation on how I have this board set up. Um, I love this board. It's very, very nice. Um, I've had no issues with it. Uh, I love that with the bus sends, you can uh, assign your EQ to each of your... Um, to each of the in-ear monitor systems. So, like, I have different... Um, different musicians that would rather have a little bit more bass or a little bit more treble. Um, and instead of making them go do the adjustment on their, uh, on their receivers, I can just do it here on this. Uh, say I have a floor monitor, I can uh, ring those out by using the EQ um, and making a really tight cue. Um, it, it's just this board has blown me away with all the functionality that's built into this thing at the price point that it's at. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to post below. Um, otherwise, uh, have a great day.